Hey, hey, Blue Table fans. I am recording live from my home study. Read the guest room with a Walmart resin table and my laptop. And I want to talk to you guys about Tyranids. When I first started playing 40k, I started with Eldar. Tyranids were my second army. And I, I should point out that Tyranids are unusual in that they are the only extra galactic army in the 40k universe. Uh, they are also the only ones that are not basically humanoid in shape. They ha Well, I guess they are humanoid in shape, but they, they don't have uh, just two arms, two legs. They are uh, hexapoidal, and I do not know if that is how you say that. That means they each have six limbs, and uh, they are the uh, quintessential bugs of this science fiction universe, and they lend themselves uh, very well to being antagonists. Now, when I started playing uh, 40k, uh, these are the Tyranid Warriors that I bought. They were pewter. They did not go well together. I did not use super glue to put them together. I tried to use uh, epoxy, two-part epoxy. And so I had to, basically, it was, it was probably a four-day process to put one together uh, that way uh, with uh, little mini clamps and kind of holding up the different uh, items with, uh, you know, um, like blocks of whatever it is, just so uh, they could cure overnight. So, but this is not the first Tyranid Warrior. Let's see if we can find another one. Here it is, Old Bucktooth. Uh, this was the first uh, Tyranid Warrior that Games Workshop put out. This, uh, oh, they were just terrible. Oh, and this is the first Hive Tyrant that they put out. These are 40 millimeter bases, so this guy really isn't, he really isn't that big, but uh, <clears throat> fortunately, I never had to go with this horribleness. Uh, uh, but I actually did own this type of Hive Tyrant at one uh, point in time. So, uh, and then they, then they came out with this Hive Tyrant, and uh, this guy was vastly improved. Uh, this is a 60 millimeter that this guy's on, so this guy's notably taller than uh, than the other one. And then, of course, uh, then we have a metal. Uh, one that we were so familiar with for so long, and then of course I did basically that same thing but in plastic. So I just have to uh, to really uh, commend Games Workshop on uh, finally getting to uh, something something really really amazing. And this this particular kit is uh, really out of the park. Uh, one thing to note when you're putting this together, uh, don't forget about the uh, little um, ankle spikes. Uh, a lot of people uh, don't notice those. Uh, also, on his tail, uh, there is a um, there is a piece. Let's see if I can find uh, the kit. Uh, on the end of the tail, like right here, uh, there, and here it is, right there. There's a little piece that goes on top of it, and uh, I think that's that's probably an easy one. So this kit makes a uh, swarm lord, also makes a uh, winged hive tyrant. Uh, by the way, a really excellent combination here is uh, twin-linked devourers, top and bottom. Uh, but as you may notice, actually on the kit you have a barbed strangler, or strangle thorn cannon, I guess they call it now, and a venom cannon, scything talons, bone sword, lash whip. But nowhere to be found is the coveted, um, the coveted uh, twin-linked devourer. Uh, where you find those, oddly, is in the Carnifex kit. So uh, let's just jump right on over here. By the way, I'm going to talk for quite a bit. Uh, oh, wait, you can't really see uh, the sprue here. All right, here, I found one. Uh, by the way, this is off of Yahoo Images, and quite frankly, I, I prefer Yahoo Images to, uh, to Google because it has this great uh, sort of scrolling function. So anyway, as you'll notice here on the Carnifex kit, by the way, not very densely populated. Uh, this sprue, and so down here you'll see these uh, monstrous creature devourers. You buy one Carnifex kit, you get one set of those. So as you can imagine, there's quite a problem when a lot of people want to have four of those on each creature. Uh, we, at Blue Table Painting, we solve this by making uh, what we call a quad devourer, uh, which you make out of, um, hold on a second, and you can make those, uh, here's one of the better conversions that I've seen. Uh, that basically you just, so here's two on this arm, and there's two on that arm, and that's, uh, that, that's one way to do it. There's about a zillion different uh, variations to it. Uh, here's another one. Uh, this one is basically just, you know, a lot of green stuff and parts, you know, fixed into it, but 
Uh, on this version, you just basically have one gun. Well, I guess he has a second pair down here, but uh, really you could just do uh, one giant thing. All right, uh, here's, a, here's another type of conversion. And basically these uh, devourers, these conical lumps, uh, they come out of the... <clears throat> They come out of the termagant kit, and so, you know, obviously you're going to have a zillion of those. All right, let's uh, head back on over to um, Warhammer 40k Armies, and we'll select Tyranids. And then you come to this intro panel, which I don't like. I wish they would just go to the product list, but oh well. You know, that that's just me. I guess a new player um, uh, would probably need some introduction. So uh, Codex Tyranids, you got to get that. Uh, naturally, download the uh, FAQ. Uh, the Battle Force is one hundred and twenty-five dollars, and basically uh, in that you get. Um, in fact, let's go to that. Uh, you get um, uh, what is it? Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen. So basically, um, you probably get ninety, a hundred. Yeah, basically, you get the Gene Stealers for free. Is one way to look at it. But just, since Gene Stealers have fallen out of favor. Uh, and, you know, aren't as good as they used to be, and believe me, I've tried them, uh, then, yeah, you know, you just, uh, you really don't need to get the Battle Force so much. Uh, next up for HQ, you got uh, Tyranid Tyranifex Turvagon, and this obviously makes both of those uh, units. Now, something interesting here is that a Tyranifex uh, can have um, the Acid Spray, Let's see if we can find a pit, nope, that's the uh, Rupture Cannon, that's two Strength 10 shots. Uh, that sounds great, but quite frankly, there's other there's other ways to uh, to deal with stuff. Oh, here we go. Here's the acid spray thing. Now, I actually thought this would be an awesome uh, thing to use for <clears throat> a uh, a quad devourer, like I was showing you, uh, and just have those stand in. But it is this actually is a little big for the uh, hive tyrant and the uh, carnifex models, but uh, I am I am going to experiment. Uh, just uh, just a little bit with that. All right, let's go back. Uh, so really, if you're making a Tyranid force, uh, two two Turvagons is pretty much stock. Uh, you've got Hive Tyrant Swarm Lord, which we've talked about. I'm a huge fan of uh, the Winged Hive Tyrant in uh, Sixth Edition. The Winged Hive Tyrant has about you know a zillion tactical possibilities. Um, but you know, quite frankly, just in terms of you know, killing power, a, tur a Turvagon's pretty good. Turvagon with Crushing Claws, you know, is still, uh, still a Psyker. And, um, uh, I wonder, I wonder if the Turvagon can take Twin Link Devourer. Nope, she sure cannot. So, uh, when you pick up a Turvagon, uh, this is a Terran effect, so let's see if I can find the Turvagon version. Uh, when you pick up a Turvagon, uh, you need at least 19 Termagants for spawning purposes, and that is what that is what makes the Tyranid army uh, pretty expensive. Uh, but you know, if you're going to get into this hobby, um, you know, expense can't be your principal concern. And you know, you can pick stuff up uh, pretty inexpensively secondhand. I do recommend our web store at bluetablepaintingstore.com, and we are and we take trade-ins too. And in fact, right now I need termagants. Does anyone want to trade me some termagants? Uh, contact me at bluetablepainting at gmail.com. I'll be glad to trade you something off of uh, our website. And uh, probably, if you get back to me really soon, uh, probably in your favor. Okay, so uh, if you want to take a Tyrant Guard, uh, let's take a look. I do believe these are $25 each. Uh, you take up to three to slug it with your Hive Tyrant on foot. And uh, it, makes the, it makes him an absolute beast uh, with... Um, uh, with, oh, what the heck is it? With, uh, toughness, I believe they have toughness six. So, these guys just absolutely ridiculous. Uh, but I, I personally don't, yeah, they have toughness six. Strength five. Uh, they can also have a lash whip or, uh, a bone sword. And, uh, lash whips are pretty good. Pretty good on these guys. Uh, but, uh, the... The unit doesn't really come with those, or doesn't come with those options. One thing you do is you can take this, you can cut it like right here, and you can flip this around and make it into a sword. Uh, the other thing you do is you can cut it at the wrist, and you can take a gargoyle body, or, or, let me tell you how else you can make a lash whip. 
quick and dirty lash whip. No. Um, okay, I can't really uh, find it. Hold on a second. Uh, okay, so uh, what you do is on the old, good old Carnifex sprue, you see down here, this uh, Venom Cannon piece, you basically you cut that, you put a little spike on the end, and that, uh, that, makes, a, that makes a passable uh, lash whip. So uh, let's go ahead and go back to our list. So quite frankly, Tyrant Guard are, are very durable. Um, personally, I think a great strategy with Tyranids is uh, what I call Crush of the Swarm, uh, where you just, you just have so many bodies on the table uh, you can just absolutely maul your opponent, and uh, Tyrant Guard would be a good addition to that. Uh, now, so let's move on to Hive Guard. Uh, Hive Guard have uh, Toughness 6, uh, 2 shots, 24-inch range, Strength 8, and uh, so they were they were great against uh, Light Mech. Uh, I, I'm not sure if they're going to have the uh, Torrent of Fire needed to take out Flyers, like a unit of three of these guys. Uh, and I do believe they're about uh, 50 points apiece. Um, not absolutely certain there. Um, yeah, 50 points each. And uh, and they do have indirect fire, uh, which is kind of cool. So a brood of three of these guys is very handy. Uh, you will never uh, lack for good targets. But they are only AP4. But basically, these guys are like tearing at auto cannon. And uh, they, are, they are pretty pathetic. In, no, actually, they're not bad in close combat. They have two attacks at strength five so uh hive guard zone throps now i want to talk about zone throps because i have really started to like these guys and by the way i'm making a conversion of these uh out of um raveners right now so uh you'll see uh, whether you whether you like that or not um <clears throat> they are fine cast now which makes them a little bit better imagine if this were metal you know how top heavy that is they're constantly falling over and even the fine cast ones they do tend to fall over uh, because of the uh, center of gravity, and the base is only a 40 mil, and they're pretty wide at the top. So I'm trying to solve that with my with my Ravener uh, conversion. So Zone Thropes are uh, psychers, and they get uh, two powers. The two powers they normally come with are both fantastic. Strength 5, AP3, Blast, 24-inch range, or Strength 5, excuse me, Strength 10, AP1 Lance, or a Warp Lance, I'm not sure if it has the Lance special rule, but that's only 18 inch range, but they're, but the critical thing here is unlike a lot of the other elites, uh, such as Venom Thropes or uh, Hive Guard, they are, um, they are uh, uh, Synapse creatures, so they help keep your army together, and you will never lack for something for them to do, they're so versatile, they're really cool. But uh, what I want to start doing is messing with the um, <clears throat> messing with the psychic power. So you get a brood of uh, 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 three zone ropes. They'll each get two powers. Um, so uh, let's talk about um, the three powers that Tyranids can have: are biomancy, telekinesis, and uh, telepathy. So there's a lot of versatility there. And um, so basically, you're gonna you're gonna roll. And uh, quite frankly, I, I don't know exactly how it works. Uh, I've read it, but then I forgot. So, uh, so let's talk about the biomancy powers. So uh, the first one is Iron Arm, and <clears throat> it targets the Psyker, and uh, they get plus D3 strength and plus D3 toughness, and Eternal Warrior. Quite frankly, that's, that's not that great, but that is absolutely ridiculously fantastic on the, on the Hive Tyrant. Uh, because he would be up to um, strength eight, toughness eight, and that's just that's just ridiculous. Um, <clears throat> the hive tyrant doesn't really need eternal warrior because uh, he's got um, he's got uh, whatever it is uh, already got toughness six. So uh, so there's that. But you know what? I'm going to look up eternal warrior really quick. Yep, it's uh, just immune to instant death. So there's that. Um, okay, uh, the next one is Enfeeble, and that's a Malediction that targets an enemy unit within 24 inches, and they get a minus one penalty to both strength and toughness. So I would be happy to roll that one up among my uh, zone throws. Now imagine a brood where two of them had this power. I mean, you could really just, yeah, I mean, you could just really work over uh, an enemy unit. 
And um, uh, although maybe somebody could tell me if that's cumulative. Uh, could you actually kill an enemy unit by having, you know, by throwing Enfeeble on them uh, multiple times? In fact, why don't we just look this up right now? All right. Uh, maledictions are cumulative. Note that bonuses and penalties from different maledictions are always cumulative, but cannot, unless otherwise stated, take characteristics okay. above 10 or below 1 height. Okay. Um, all right. Let's move on to the next one. So that was Enfeeble. So I would not be sad to pull Enfeeble as one of my powers. Uh, the next one is Endurance, uh, which is a blessing with 24-inch range. It's got a good range. See, Zoanthropes, you know, they're not exactly close combat monsters. So uh, powers with range of 12 aren't that good. Uh, but, of course, you run them with, uh, with Interference. So that helps. And the great thing about Zoanthropes, they have a 3-up and Vulnerable save. Uh, toughness four, so that makes them really hard to kill. They each have two wounds, so uh, not too bad. Uh, although I Iron Arm would make it great uh, to put that zone throw in front, because that would make them to toughness six, immune to instant death, three up, uh, three up, um, invulnerable save. And um, so, at, so you put that guy in front, and he takes all the shooting. And um, so, uh, hold on just a second. All right, so um, let's go ahead and move on then. So uh, we've got uh, the next Biomancy, which is Life Leech, um, which is range 12, strength 6, AP 2, brings back wounds. Uh, not so good. I'd be a little disappointed with Life Leech. Um, then now we're on to Biomancy Power 5, uh, which is Warp Charge. Oh, now, hold on a second. How many of these are Warp Charge 2? Nope. Oh, uh, looks like Warp Charge 1 all the way through, because I'm pretty sure that the, um, I'm pretty sure that uh, Zone Throps only get uh, one power a turn, Warp Charge 1. So, uh, Warp Speed is a blessing that targets the Psyker, so you got two powers in there that target the Zone Throp uh, himself, and quite frankly, that is not that good. Uh, so, yeah, but they, but do note, they each get two powers, so, you know, one of them's bound to be useful. Uh, and then, so it gets plus D3 initiative, and plus D3 attacks, and fleet. And by the way, so the ones that are terrible for Zoanthropes are awesome for the Hive Tyrants. So, uh, six, uh, power six is Hemorrhage, and, uh, that's, again, an offensive spell range 12. So, um, you know, not... Not too bad, but not so great for the zone throws. Uh, so let's continue. Uh, so you could uh, pick Biomancy. And, and by the way, with uh, nine zone throws on the board, which by the way is what I'm up to, uh, is um, that's a lot of powers to keep track of, which one has which. So I'll have to have some pretty, some pretty uh, clear tokens uh, for that. All right. So uh, yeah, I'm on Yahoo Images now, so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, scroll through. Uh, whatever we find here. So yeah, that's uh, pretty top-heavy. That's the old Zoanthrope in the rule book that I bought and learned it from. Oh, that's kind of a cool color scheme. Yeah, that's a lot of Zoanthropes. Um, uh, now that's the uh, second edition Zoanthrope, where they had a little bit of an Eldar-esque feel. They were exploring this idea that as Tyranids consumed different races, they would, um, you know, take on their characteristics, and you'll see uh, little, um, like, Eldar uh, spirit stones on there. Okay, don't need that. Uh, that's an interesting zone throw uh, conver uh, conversion. So, uh, here we go. Oh, that's the old gimpy one. Oh, look at that. It's got, like, barnacles on him. All right, uh, I think we've had an... Oh, look at that. Here's a plastic conversion. Oh, that's cool. That's kind of the one I'm doing. So you got a Tyranid warrior body here. Uh, he's just put spikes in the armholes. I don't know how I feel about that. Uh, looks like a ravener body and some addition, some ravener back spines uh, on the front. That is actually that is actually pretty cool. I think that's what I'm gonna do. All right, so um, let's uh, talk about biomancy. So biomancy, uh, the primaris power is uh, smite. Oh, I'm sorry, I was talking about biomancy. Uh, Twelve inch range, strength four, AP two, assault four. Blah. I mean, it's good, but it's not so great when. A zone throw has to get within 12 inches to 
can use that power. But again, they each get two powers, so one of them's bound to be one of the good ones. In fact, what what are you looking for with the zone turks? You're looking for the blessings uh, that um, not warp speed, not iron arm, not life leech, uh, endurance. Uh, oh, I didn't talk about that one. Endurance, a blessing with 24 inches, gives a feel no pain, it will not die, and relentless, and uh, enfeebled. So really, there's really two powers in here that you're looking for on your zoanthropes, powers two and three, uh, which are great support powers. Uh, fortunately, I do believe they lose their shooting powers. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, look up it will not die. and. Um, you know, maybe we can, uh, we can get some. God, these ads are so obnoxious. Okay, and, but now that I've said it, uh, that didn't solve my problem. All right, so um, yeah, a lot of different cool color schemes there. Uh, let's see what Ill, It Will Not Die does. Uh, by the way, I'm still learning 6th edition. And uh, boy, my brain has got a lot of stuff in it. So... Um, <clears throat> Uh, at the end of friendly turn, roll d6 for each model with a special rule that has less than its starting number of wounds or hull points. It has not been removed as a casualty is, or, as, or destroyed. On a roll of 5 up, that unit regains a wound or hull point lost earlier in the battle. Oh, that's awesome! That's like that's like a tyranny regeneration, but better. It's on a 5 up. All right, I'll take some of that. I will take some of that. All right, uh, so let's move on to telekinesis. Uh, you've got... Uh, uh, let's see, uh, Telekinesis Primaris Powers Assail, 18-inch range, Strength 6, Assault 1, and Strike Down. Well, that doesn't seem very good, uh, unless Strike Down is awesome. Let's uh, see what it is. Uh, I do not, oh, here it is. Uh, strike Down, any model that suffers one or more unsaved wounds or passes one or more saving throws against an attack with Strike Down, it's knocked off city, so it must be get up before it has its initiative. Well, I didn't read that very well. Uh, must get up before it can do anything else. It has its initiative. Moves as if it is in difficult terrain until the end of the next turn. Monstrous creatures and vehicles are immune to strike down. Well, at least it's 18 inch range, right? So, uh, so that's that's not bad. Uh, crush is focused wick fire of 18 inches, and um, it suffers. Uh, a hit with a strength equal to the result of 2d6 inches. Um, that's, that's all right, I guess. Um, Gate of Infinity is a blessing which targets the Psyker and his unit. And um, uh, basically, it allows you to teleport 24 inches, something like that. It's not that good. Obduration Mechanicum is a malediction. Uh, that targets uh, an enemy unit within uh, 24 inches. And, uh, oh, they, that, so here's a good one. They have to re-roll uh, hits and wounds and um, uh, of sixes. So imagine a Toughness 8 Hive Tyrant uh, where its enemy can only wound it on by rolling a six, but it has to re-roll sixes. So that basically makes him vulnerable. Telekine Dome uh, gives a friendly unit within 12 inches a 5 plus invulnerable save, and also some of the hits can bounce off. That's pretty cool. So we've got two good ones for from Telekinesis, four zones. Right? Vortex of Doom is 12 inch range, strength 10, AP 1, heavy 1, and blast. So heavy 1, not so good. Um... If uh, they fail the test, though, the Vortex of Doom goes on that guy. So, uh, Shockwave is uh, range 12, strength 3, assault D6, and pinning. So, meh. Mental Fortitude is a blessing that targets a friendly unit within 24 inches. Uh, if it's falling back, it regroups and gains the Fearless special rule. Not so good. Um, and uh, now we're on to Telepathy. So. Yeah, um, I don't know. I, I, it's 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 tough. I'm gonna actually have to uh, try this. All right, I'm gonna leave telepathy for another time. Uh, we're gonna get back to our unit by unit uh, talk about uh, tyranids. Um, 
So uh, the old pyrovore, the pyrovore is a really bizarre creature. Um, it uh, can come in a mycetic spore. That's really the way to go with these. By the way, there's really no good conversion or model for mycetic spores. Um, we, uh, we've made a, quote, alien seed pod, uh, but we've sent discontinued uh, production there. And, uh, and really, we just, we just made a few of them. So, um, yeah, quite frankly, I just have not been able to get our casting off the ground. Uh, I would love it if a, um, if somehow I could get some kind of subsidiary company to, uh, to work with us and, um, you know, I don't know. We, I mean, we have a ton of stuff that we made. We're just not suited up to, uh, market it and, uh, distribute and carry stock and that, that whole thing. So, um, a pyrovore, uh, is, an odd creature, you can fit three, one to three of them in a spore pod, which, which is the way to go because you drop them in, the spore pod uh, can't deviate in really a bad way, and uh, it's strength, they, basically it's a, he it's a heavy flamer. And I gotta tell you, yeah, I, I like it. Even if it, even just for the, if they only get one shot off, they can really put the cramp on a unit. Uh, the downside is the expense. Uh, a pyrovore, if you can believe it, is, oh no, it's 45 points per model. So I gotta tell you, that is really, really, really not bad. Uh, they only have one attack at strength four, but it is like a power weapon because of acid maw. Uh, they ignore armor saves. So it's not like a power weapon, it ignores armor saves, which is even better. Uh, that used to be what a power weapon do did, but it doesn't anymore. And uh, it also can uh, blow up and kill additional things. So a pyrovore and a spore pod, that just even just one. Also, I might note uh, this model uh, could work really a lot better than the biovore model, and that's what I plan on doing. I have three pyrovores. I'm gonna do up some spore mines and have these guys pull double duty as um, as biovores, which are not bad. Uh, the lictor can't really charge and fails to instant death. Uh, excuse me, can't really charge the turn that it appears. Uh, however, the Death Leaper, if you're going to take a Lictor, or that appeals to you, don't take a Lictor, take the Death Leaper. The Death Leaper has, if nothing else, uh, the ability where it actually um, will reduce an enemy character's uh, leadership by D3 uh, before the beginning of the game. And that is just a huge psychological effect. I just really, really love that. So uh, let's go ahead and move on to uh, the Venom Thrope. Yeah, I'm not going to talk much about the Venom Thrope. It's, you know, the Tyranid book is just full of such weird creatures. All right, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave off for now uh, because I think I'm going on a half hour of blabbing at you. And, <clears throat> but uh, I do plan on returning and uh, talking more about, um, more about uh, the Tyranid list and, uh, and what I think. Yes, isn't it lovely to hear what I think? Uh, anyway, uh, th thanks, uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, I really appreciate it. I am always um, humbled and inspired that so many people tune in to to my channel, and um, I, I think it's really I think it's really great. So thank you very much.